just be that quiet. Mm. There, there's always somebody wanting to take your place. Mm. Uh, last time I was here, Luther, I told you, even your place. Mm. There's somebody yeah, wanting yeah, to take yeah, it. Yeah. So clearly we have competition. But you see, competition for people is different from you know these uh, uh, competitions in the uh, public or uh, private sector jobs. Because there you you have to give the best promise in terms of uh, representing people, in terms of uh, just the promise has to be your your best in order to get the trust of the people. Uh, those who promise violence, those who promise, uh, uh, you know, all of those negative yeah. things don't get the trust of the people. Yeah. I and like there's yeah. something, I think in one of the papers, I just can't remember which one, but there's a, there's a wonderful quote from somebody in the party, in the PF, yes. uh, who points out that it's a good sign that there are so many people who want to contest Absolutely. Uh, uh, and for adoption yes. because it shows that it's a popular party. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, in Lunte, obviously. Sorry, I just did something up. I'm very sorry. <laughs> in Lunte, of course, there are a few people who want to become MP there. Uh, but as I said, they, they should give a better promise uh, than what I would give. Uh, and also, I agree with that person who said so because it shows that this is a party that everybody thinks uh, would be forming government again and therefore if you have a chance to be MP there you can contribute better. Okay. Uh, the Times, uh, headlines in the Times, shot in the arm for COVID vax, uh, top Chinese official arrives, uh, Shaka after Kapata's seat and uh, someone helps the cover belt uh, PS. Uh, Bright Nundwe has appealed to the Ministry of Works to find temporary office accommodations for cabinet office staff while the colonial style cabinet office is undergoing renovations. The Daily Nation leads with uh, crooks invade presidential race. Uh, this year's uh, presidential race has been invaded by criminals and fraudsters who should be in prison for clear crimes and aspiring in the highest offices in the land. This is from the Citizens Democratic uh, Party president, uh, Mr. Robert Mwanza. Imbuli Investments Limited has denied owing Finsbury Investment Limited any funds under the mortgage and supplementary uh, mortgages. This is a, a headline, Imbuli Investments Denied Debt Claim, and Tazara Workers Protest Hiring Out Rail is another headline on the front page of the uh, Daily Nation. Um, on the business page of the Daily Not, Chiwombo Emphis talks uh, 6,000 jobs, target to generate an, an output of 320 million US dollars by 2025. Uh, Zesco aids 480,000 vulnerable customers in wake of COVID. And um, lastly, on the business page, uh, Magoya Cooked Chickens owner nods business and entrepreneur engaged in selling traditional cooked free range chickens says local entrepreneurship remains cardinal in unlocking rural poverty. Mm. The, de the news diggers leads with Leave My In Laws, Come Face Me. Uh, this is a quote from the leader of the UPND. Uh, the president calls for probe into Yunza students' accommodation fees. Uh, I'll support anyone but the president. This is a quote from uh, the Lusaka lawyer, Kelvin Fuwe Bualia. And only criminals should be worried about the cybersecurity bill. This is a quote uh, from the Transport and Communication Minister, Honorable Kafaya, who is in the studio this morning. Who? KBM. Oh, I see. Isn't he oh, watching okay, stand? Yes. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. He should be supporting himself. Why supporting anyone else? Yeah. I'll, yeah. 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 Actually, the quote should be, "I'll support myself, yeah. not I'll support saying. anyone else." <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what's in your papers <laughs> this morning. Okay. Yeah. The Daily Talk on GOZ. 7.38 in the morning. I'm sure you may have heard the Honourable's uh, voice during what the papers say. Honourable Mtotik El Kafwaya, who is the Minister of Transport and Communications, is in studio with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Thank you very much, Roxy. Good morning, Luchi. Good morning, Minister. How are you today? Well, thank you very much. All right, so we've been hearing about the uh, cyber crimes uh, bill and uh, obviously a lot of speculation, a lot of questions uh, surrounding uh, that particular bill. And maybe you could just give us a, a short insight on what we can expect as, as, as the people. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the, I, I was informed by Luchi that the focus would be this bill. Uh, so I came with a hard copy. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm from the old briefing. school, so the phone won't do me good. <laughs> uh, I will read the objects of the bill. Mm. I think that's very important. Yeah. The objects of the bill are to A, 
ensure the provision of cybersecurity in the Republic, B, provide for the protection of persons against cybercrime, C, provide for child online protection, D, facilitate identification declaration and protection of critical information infrastructure, E, provide for the collection of and preservation of evidence of computer and network related crime, F, revise the admission in criminal matters of electronic evidence, G, provide for registration of cyber security services providers, and H, provide for matters connected with or incidental to the foregoing. This is what you expect in this bill. These are the objects. Yeah. So there have been, they've been a, a lot of people who are concerned about the, the contents of the bill. Yeah. And again, I, so let me, let, me, let, me be, let me first of all just say that I like the idea of this bill. I like the idea that there is need for us to sort out a problem. That's good to hear. Um, where, I have my, where I have a concern myself yes. Yes. is um, there is a blanket way that the bill gives law enforcement to be able to come to me, for example, and say, we are tracking your phone, we are recording your phone calls, um, and, and publish those, those items. That's, for me, that's where I am, I'm a little concerned that, that maybe the bill doesn't speak as to how um, those that are in charge will make sure that it's not abused. Well, which to the contrary. Uh, this bill is protecting uh, against recording of your phone calls without lawful excuse. Mm -hmm. To the contrary, actually. Uh, the bill is going to ensure that your conversations are not recorded without lawful excuse. You understand? Uh, which means that nobody will be able to record your conversations if they don't have a legal backing. You understand. So for me, that's very important because you don't want your conversations with me to be recorded by anybody, mm -hmm. regardless of who they are in our communication uh, you know, process. So uh, unless there is a legal reason and a legal uh, excuse uh, for them to be able to do so. And that recording, according to this bill, can only be used for the purpose for which they took the recording. You understand. Um, leaking of that recording is an offense, whether by the law enforcement officer or a, a, an, an, an offense which is a serious one, by the way. So uh, this is going to protect you and me, uh, you know, from all these WhatsApp leakages we see, uh, screenshots. You, uh, you've seen screenshots of some conversations of uh, people. Uh, it's going to protect us. So I, I, I see something different from what you said, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, um, just to follow up with regards to what Luchi was saying, I was reading about the power of the inspectors, the cyber inspectors. Yes. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, they're allowed to um, search any person on the premise, um, uh, take extracts from or make copies of any book or document. Um, where, how, what measures will be put in place to protect, let's say, from someone maybe planting or hacking someone's system? Yeah, hacking is... Um, because someone can hack somebody and then accuse them. You, the, uh, this is what we are saying. Mm. Uh, we are providing a law that will criminalize uh, hacking. You understand? Mm. So in the first place, th this, is, this is an all-encompassing law. Uh, illegal activities on the cyberspace have, have been considered and all of them provided for. So hacking, the, the, the first thing you talk about is you shouldn't be hacked, mm. you understand. Anybody who hacks your system uh, is actually an enemy of this, uh, of this bill. So clearly, uh, that shouldn't happen. If this bill is imp implemented uh, adequately, you, you, you are going to minimize you know, chances of hacking. I just I want to come back to yeah. so how d maybe you can just allay some of the fears uh, yes. and, and this was a statement from from the CSOs and I think I watched McDonald's Chipenzi also mentioned this yes. uh, yesterday how do you allay the fears that the powers that are given to the certain organisations that will be born out of this bill are not abused? It's good governance. Yeah. It's the same. I mean, all these uh, laws that we have are governed. Yeah. 
isn't it? There are structures that are put in place for the purposes of implementing those laws. And what we want are credible Zambians uh, who should be able to have a heart of the people you, uh, and, be, and be able to execute the intentions of this bill in a manner that promotes uh, human condition. So my, my, my sense is that um, the application of our national values and principles, the Ubuntu, uh, you know, integrity and all that, should be able to help us because we need to constitute a team uh, that can carry the intentions of government for the benefit of the people. Uh, my, uh, and, and obviously there's always going to be wrong people anyway, but those people uh, may become criminals uh, and this same bill will deal with them. Yeah, you know. So when, when people say, <coughs> excuse me, because I've heard people say things like uh, the Public Order Act, yes, it exists, yes, but its application is not done right, uh, and that's 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 the example they point to a bill like this one that, in as much as there is good, in as much as uh, as you said, good governance should allow it to flourish, that there is always a possibility that you might find yourself in a situation where the person that is in charge of one of the organizations that's born out of this bill. Uh, might apply it wrongly. <laughs> I know there's a lot of ifs and buts, <laughs> what ifs. <laughs> but maybe that's how, maybe that's you, how you, you look at it. You see, Luchi, uh, uh, most of what is said about certain things are perception and not fact. Yeah. Okay? Uh, not too long ago, I was invited by a certain radio station and asked questions, you know, about the Public Order Act. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I, I made an example of myself. Mm -hmm. I was stopped from having a meeting in Lunde. Uh, by the now uh, DIG, uh, Mr. Mwene. He stopped me uh, because he told me uh, it wasn't safe. It, it wasn't, it, it, uh, police were not able to mobilize at that point. Uh, and you can imagine I drove from Lusaka, you know, to northern province, 850 k's into Kasama, and another 90 kilometers into Lund. Uh, I couldn't have the meeting, and I came back, you see. So um, a bit of perception in there, some overzealousness in there, but these uh, are the safeguards we need to have. This is why we're introducing in our uh, supreme law of the land national values and principles. When you have a chance like myself to save people, save people with integrity. This is what we're saying. Save people with integrity. Don't save yourself because it's not about you. It's about the people. All right. Um, by the way, you can call in if you have any clarifications that you want to um, to have the minister make about the uh, cyber bill. Please feel free to call on two two six eight four one two three six seven nine zero. Now, honourable, in terms of uh, social media, a lot of Zambians do um, love social media quite a bit, and at one of the concerns is, will this take away their freedom of expression? No, it won't. Mm. Yeah, no, it won't. Um, the, the the bill is just uh, as I read out the objects. Uh, it's just to provide for security, security of even those who want to be on social media, because you want to be on social media safely. You you understand? You you don't want to be accused of doing things you are not doing, saying things you are not saying. You don't. Want, we want a safe cyberspace. It's basically like protecting this place. When I was coming in, I saw a guard. Okay, guard ensuring that the person coming in is the right person, isn't it? Uh, and and you'd imagine that guard thinks this person is going to do the right thing. So even on the cyberspace, we, we want people to transact safely, we want people to converse safely, and be able to do whatever they are doing safely. Uh, but for those who are going there for the purposes of criminal activities, they, we, we should get hold of them. Um, uh, this from Mr. Piri. The objective of the bill is very good, and I'm personally happy that such a law is going to be introduced in our country. Yeah. But what right does the law enforcer have to invade my privacy without getting a court order? I've not seen anything like that. Uh, it, it has to be lawful intervention. Mm. Lawful intervention following the law process. Uh, there, there's nothing like that in the law. You do, you do, I mean, <laughs> even here, physically, you can't do it. You understand? You can't do it. So it's um, it, it, it's the same, you know, uh, measure we are taking in the cyberspace. It has to be lawful. Yeah. Okay. Morning. Hello. Morning, Luchi. Morning, morning. Minister is listening. Go ahead. Yeah. Honorable Minister, morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yeah. I I get a feeling that the, as a people, we want to use, I don't know whether it's faith, to believe that we are dealing with perfect people 
I, I want to ask a question because you're seeing that uh, uh, these things will be done by credible people. What if we have people who are not credible in those in charge of those things? How then do we get protected? Because there's a chance that you may have an imperfect person in there. Yeah. I remember the former Ghanaian president saying, we need to set up an institution where even if the devil became the president, he has no choice but to do what is right. Yeah. Why don't we go that route and use faith, thinking that we have perfect people in those institutions? Thank you very much. <laughs> and I guess this is also yeah. what you were trying to put yeah. across with the power of the, of the, of the inspectors. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you see, um, w w when you can do the job you've been hired to do, you get fired. It's as simple as that. Okay? Because it's a system. Listen, this is a system. Uh, if, if I can't do my job, I should lose it. Another person who is better than me should come in my place. It's as simple as that. Uh, it's impossible to get a perfect society. We will never get it, okay? Uh, uh, and this law is, is providing for structures that are necessary to combat cybercrime, okay? Uh, and that structure will have resources, including people. Uh, some of the people will have to be fired, some of the people will have to be retained, some of the people will have to be trained and retrained. It's, listen, the fact that they are dealing with... Uh, issues related to the cyberspace, it does not mean they are not like us. Yeah. They are like us. You know, um, you know, having the same morality we have, uh, or immorality we may have. Uh, and, and, and if you are seen uh, to be immoral in your position, this same law has provided for you being dealt with. As, for example, you cannot leak uh, a, a conversation that you lawfully obtained uh, by virtue of doing your job. You get, you, you get jailed yourself. So they are safeguards. Yeah, they, they are very clear safeguards as far as I've been able to see. Phoenix, hello. Hello, morning. Morning, how are you? Fantastic. Good morning, Honorable. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Calling from garden. Honorable, we've got a lot of cases like hiking in Zambia. My question is, how is this view going to reduce for help in terms of hiking? Now, you can work very good. Okay. So it touches on, on hiking as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ndalumbaga Pati Musvasa. <laughs> was that your question, Roxy? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, did, did I answer that? <laughs> uh, were you satisfied? <laughs> Listen, hacking is um, is, is an offence. Uh, in the, it's like intruding. You know, it's like trespassing, uh, performing activities that you are not entitled to perform in another person's property, right? Uh, in the physical space, that's what we'd call it. So um, it, it's an offence, and uh, and there are, there are sanctions established in the bill. Yeah. There, there's another a very pertinent question that's come up ever since the bill was introduced. Yes. It has to do with with banning social media. Yes. Uh, and there are examples, Uganda most recently. Do you want to allay some of those fears? Because they, they, it does come up quite a bit that well, the intention <laughs> of the government is to ban social media during elections. Well, <laughs> or to switch off the internet during elections. <laughs> <laughs> Perceptions. Uh, as, 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 I, as I read out the objects of the bill, uh, I think that it was clear there's nothing like mm -hmm. that, okay? Uh, creating a safe cyberspace doesn't mean banning it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's like the police going around our compound to make sure the, the criminals are kept at bay. It, it's, it's not saying uh, people can't have activities in those compounds. Mm -hmm isn't it? Uh, this bill is just taking safety to the cyberspace. Safety to this, you know, uh, imaginary space. Or it's not imaginary, but what can I call it? It's this coordinated space by information technology. Mm -hmm. You understand? Uh, the, the, the cyber ecosystem. We, we want throughout that ecosystem to have uh, security. That's all. Uh, there's nothing like, you know, switching off social media, switching off internet and so on. There's nothing like that in this bill. Absolutely nothing. 
That's not true. But when you yeah. read, okay, so I'm just going to read you uh, just a little line. Yes. When you read, like, for example, Section 38, yes. uh, an electronic communication service provider, yes. one of the mobile companies, as an example, yes. uh, they have to ensure that electronic uh, communication service providers uses an electronic communication system that is capable of supporting lawful interception in accordance with this act. Yeah. Installs hardware, software facilities, and devices to enable the interception of communications when so required. I understand that if these are requirements, you obviously lawful. need law, law, lawful. Yeah, yeah. I understand that there yeah. is law, law enforcement yeah. officers. Uh, but again, there's a very thin line between protecting someone's privacy and what this... And what is yeah and evading and which is in no, a way and no, that's no, no. what most people are the, really we, asking uh, is uh, as much as this is a good thing yes. and and um it allows for people to be protected it also allows for the people who are in charge to be able to maybe use those powers beyond and so i think the main thing is how am i as a citizen going to be protected from someone not abusing that i, I know you've mentioned that you know what, if you don't do your job you get fired. But uh, where's my protection still? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, Luti and Roxy you've heard of abuse of authority. Okay? Uh, you use your authority as prescribed. Uh, if you go over and above, you, you may be abusing your authority. Okay? Uh, I, I, and I'm very happy that as Luti, an independent person who wasn't there when this uh, bill was being drafted, uses the word lawful. Okay? Uh, even my search at my home, if, if people want to search my home, they can only come in lawfully. Otherwise, they won't. How, you, can, how can a person defend themselves lawfully? It's by using the provisions that are there. Uh, but listen, why should I be afraid to be searched, whether you are searching my physical home or my activities in the cyberspace? I shouldn't be afraid uh, unless um, I'm doing something bad. Uh, and I'm sure that if you intercept some of my communication okay, um, and screen it, you still come and say, oh, okay, they were just discussing with Roxy. Okay, mm -hmm. they they were just chatting. Rox is his friend. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. But if 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 we are discussing criminal issues, we should be checked. Okay, whether it's on radio or it's uh, via SMS, we should be checked because we shouldn't be sitting here and discussing criminal matters. We shouldn't. We should be uh, concerned about the safety of other people. That's very important. Um, Phoenix, hello. Okay, we lost you. Two two six eight four one two three six seven nine zero. Um, uh, uh, other issues that keep coming up is why now? Why not after the elections? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Why now? Yes. Okay. Uh, Article one one four of the Constitution of Zambia provides for the functions of cabinet. Okay, I'll give you two functions of cabinet. One is to uh, to create policies and ensure their implementation, and two, it is uh, to approve bills before their submission to parliament. You know, the law development process is such that um, they are developed by central government through cabinet and then taken to parliament for enactment. As you know, only parliament can enact laws. Now, in the process, uh, in, in that process, there's a huge responsibility for cabinet to develop uh, to, to approve those laws. This is why as a minister in charge, my responsibility is to make sure that I, I take a concept to cabinet and a concept which has a proper basis, okay? Uh, and cabinet gives me uh, principal approval to go back to the ministry and, be, uh, and give an instruction to Minister of Justice for the law to be developed, okay? So I got initially the principal approval, and it was based uh, on the convention, this uh, African Union convention, uh, to, which, uh, to which we assented, and also developments in the cyber, in, in technology leading to all these cyber, cyber issues, okay? So um, we gave, the, based on the principal approval, we, we gave the instruction to the Minister of Justice to, to develop this law. So the, 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 the law development 
uh, normally a justice who take into account drafting and then internal legislation uh, where a, a number of uh, all, all these uh, all these provisions are scrutinized uh, and, and a number of uh, stakeholders are invited to make submissions uh, and after that we have a legislative committee, and I'm privileged again to be a member of the legislative committee. This is a committee of cabinet which scrutinizes bills, uh, regardless of where they are coming from. So I had the chance uh, to look at this, and this bill again is circulated to all ministries and all provinces. Um, uh, and in fact, there was an issue of CSOs, uh, CSOs yes, because they wanted uh, consultation. consultations. Yeah. I can tell you here that every CSO operates in a particular sector. And every CSO is sitting in one constituency or the other. That means that in your own sector, in your own sector, uh, you should be able to create these consultation networks. And your views should find their way into the legislative committee, uh, into even cabinet, okay? But over uh, and above uh, the cabinet approval, which comes just before a publication and introduction of a bill to, to uh, a parliament, you still have a chance to take your views to the parliamentary committee and to your own MP who should be able to debate the bill in Parliament, you understand. So the issue of representation and consultation and where you belong and so on, it should be clarified by all this entire process. Um, this bill is currently at Parliament and it's uh, it's being uh, scrutinized by the committee. Uh, two com uh, two committees, uh, Honorable Mr. Speaker, consolidated uh, to make uh, one uh, one committee. And again, that speaks to the importance of the bill. We've got the. Uh, committee on uh, information and the committee on security which have been put together to look at this bill. Uh, so again there, there's that chance for whoever, including an MP, to be able to go and submit. This is why when Mr. Speaker is making, referring a bill, he even says members of the public, honorable members and members of the public who wish to submit should do so within the working program of the committee. So uh, I, I, I think that uh, some of these issues must not arise. And this notion of thinking that government doesn't know what it's doing should come to an end because government is procedural. Government doesn't make shortcuts. The development of this law and all other laws that I have seen develop has gone through very healthy processes. Very healthy. Okay. Yeah. I hope we can keep you here for a little, for a little while longer. We'll just do a quick news break, okay. and then we'll return. On Go TV, channel 305. Is it the same? I bet. Mm -hmm. This the is the main news story. Has story. Has but I don't know if it's... By ABSA Magazine and PLC. ABSA. Bringing your possibilities to life. This season, ABSA is giving you the ultimate assist so that you can achieve your goals. All APSA cardholders who make contactless purchases of any amount or those who make point of sale or online payments of 200 kwacha and above will automatically be entered into APSA's massive giveaway draw and stand a chance to win a share of 100,000 kwacha between 11 December 2020 and 28 February 2021. Tap into fast, safe and an easier way to pay with contactless APSA, credit or debit card. Another way that APSA is helping you to get things done. That's Africanacity. That's APSA. The headlines. Andy Ford Banda urges opposition to be brave and ensure PF is voted out this year. Agro dealers cry foul over non payment of debt by government. Seven die in Nigerian Air Force Abuja plane crash. To present the news, I'm Lucivilo Gondwe. Opposition People's Alliance for Change PAC leader Andy Ford Banda says no amount of intimidation will stop the people of Zambia from voting the ruling Patriotic Front out of power during the August 12th general election. Mr. Banda tells Phoenix News that as the election day draws closer, the PF are employing different tactics to disadvantage opponents. 
He has since advised all opposition political parties not to be intimidated, but work extra hard and explain to the Zambian people what they aspire to do for the betterment of the country. The PAC leader has also urged Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo to ensure that all political parties are protected and citizens' lives preserved. Further, Mr. Banda has underscored the significance of upholding the rights of every citizen without being subjected to any form of intimidation and prosecution by the state. The government is trying to employ different tactics to intimidate the opposition as we get closer to the election. For us seeing that all these are gimmicks that indicate